Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Vonderhaar from Intelvid Research. Joining us on today's episode is George Birchall, Vice President of Marketing over at Epifan. Welcome, George. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having us on the show. This is great. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Tell us a little bit about Epifan, what you folks are doing in the market today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what Epifan does and your role in, create, in helping the creation and distribution of a digital video via that uh, line of Pearl devices that you make. Yeah, it's been a great year for us at Epifan. And in fact, it's probably been a great year for a lot of people in the video technology space, simply because there's been so much change. You've seen it from COVID to now. We've gone through so many iterations of people doing video in different ways. And uh, it has all been good for us because we operate under this mantra of broadcast without barriers. And what we mean by that is bringing simplicity to a world that's quite often really complex. I mean, you know it yourself. You and I were here sitting here going through the checklist of 37 items on this broadcast today just to make this work. So there's always a lot to figure out for any kind of video in any space. Um, and we primarily are known for our Pearl systems. So I have one here I can show. These are hardware appliances. And you'll see these, or you might not see them because they're hidden in the bowels of so many venues where content is being created. And they're in live event spaces, they're in universities, they're in governments, they're in churches. And ultimately they help people stream, record, you know, capture video and do it more simply than other solutions on the market. So uh, you mentioned a little bit about uh, some of those public gathering places. Uh, are, are those the primary target audience for, for the Pearl line? Uh, who, who uses this stuff? Who uses it is a great question, and it's a really fun question to answer because we have customers in space using it aboard the ISS. We have it on submarines who are doing underwater research, all these mission-critical places where they just care that they capture the video and they don't want to take any chances. But uh, the bulk of our clientele are in those spaces that you're in every day creating video. They might be a school. They might be a uh, house of worship. It might be a community center. And of course, in our world, a lot of live events where people are doing conferences and having great conversations and they want to record that content or they want to live stream it to another audience. So it's really everywhere. But this past year, we've seen a tr uh, most of our growth has been around uh, the education space and quite a lot in government as well. Now, just this past month, a couple of weeks ago, you announced uh, that you're adding some automated scheduling systems into your ecosystem. Uh, tell us how that works. Sure. So automation has been a big part of who we are as a company for years. We have um, configuration presets on our devices, which allow you to really simply just apply all the settings for a single device to let it do what it wants to do without having to mess around with it. And we do automatic file handling as well. So when your recording's done, just like today, if you were using a Perl system at your end, uh, your files would automatically be pushed to your drive where they need to go. So those are the kind of little tweaks that we think about um, just to make people's lives easier. And the latest one that we introduced um, this week has been scheduling. So this would allow you, Steve, to set up this event you know, a week in advance or a month in advance and say, guess what, at two o'clock on Wednesday, I need to record this event. And you could program your devices to automatically record and stream that content wherever you need to go. So you could make it a completely automated experience. Um, and like we talked about some of those spaces where they're houses of worship or they're their schools where they don't really want people going in and having to the responsibility of the technology in the room to be able to make those spaces automated. That's really powerful. And then, so if you have a class that happens at nine o'clock every day, you can just uh, automatically schedule for the uh, cameras to, and the recording system to turn on and capture that uh, system. So what other types of customers and what types of applications uh, do you think are better enabled by having these automated scheduling options in hand? Well, we talk about places where there are volunteers in place where, you know, or just people who are non-technical people where you don't really want to have to give them the responsibility of the equipment and just they can go into a space where it's completely automated and know that it's going to work. But on the other side of the coin, we have people who are producing content on a daily basis and they're experts in their field. And like you, they have a list of 50 things they need to do every time they do one of those kind of recordings or live streams. So if we can make their list go from 50 to 49 or to 47 or to 38, if we can just keep chipping away at that list so they don't have to think, oh, did I push record? 
that's a really basic function. And even us, like we do these kind of webinars all the time. And guess what? We forget to push recording on the ISOs. So the ISOs meaning like the full size resolution captures of the different cameras. So I get a nice shot of you and a nice shot of me at the end of it. If I forget to record that, my post-production world is kind of doomed, right? Because then I'm stuck with whatever we did in this live thing. So uh, having a button that says schedule it for two o'clock, don't forget to record and it's just going to happen. It's going to save me a lot of time and anybody who's producing content. In, in the case of uh, Intelligent Video today, you would literally be dummy proofing it. Uh, uh, and uh, speaking of this producer, this producer yeah. on this end as the dummy, uh, it would be a, a great help indeed. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, it, it definitely. We, we're all idiots at some times when it comes to video production because there's yeah. so many things. To so this really seems to be an extension of uh, Epifan's effort to really make the video content creation process a lot easier. Matter of fact, you have other products beyond uh, Pearl, Epifan Connect being one of them, is the software solution that helps uh, make your on-screen video look better. Tell us uh, what type of content creation aspects uh, or approaches can be enabled by uh, Epifan Connect. Sure, like you're right to say this is a continuation of everything we've done and that we have always been, we take pride in that we're really versatile. So any kind of physical input in place, yeah, we're gonna capture that. You got a USB camera, we're gonna figure that out. SDI, all these things. And then we did the same thing on the networking side. So you have NDI and SRT, all of these network signals. And what has been our biggest source of content the last couple of years? Well, that would be video conferencing. So a Zoom call or a Teams call where all these great conversations are happening, why not be able to capture that content as well? So we put out Epifan Connect, which, as you mentioned, is a completely cloud-based solution, which means uh, in any kind of Zoom call or any kind of Teams call, you can extract a single person from that call or multiple individual people from those calls and bring them into an existing production, no matter what kind of tools you're using. So we've kind of been able to take Zoom and Teams and make them into you know, broadcast tools or vice conversely, like take what's just a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting. And then suddenly you have that as a foundation to make the content as good as what you're doing on intelligent video today. Yeah. So across the board, we're looking at ease of use being a big issue for 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 Epifan. Why is it a big issue for for content creators? What does it mean? Uh, you know, hey, these guys are supposed to be video pros, right? Uh, why do why do video content creators need ease of use in their day to day activities? Well, you know, we call it ease of use, but you could just call it efficiency, right? How much time does it take you to get set up for any kind of video environment? like me from setting up this blue light in my background and setting up the plants and setting up the cameras and audio and all the work that we do to create this content. If we can make that faster, we'll have more video. It's really straightforward. The less time we have to spend setting up for content, the more video we'll have. And it's the same on the post side too. The faster we can get on that post-production side and efficiencies around that, uh, we're gonna be able to get more content, better content, and it's gonna be faster. Yeah, I didn't mention it before that, but that blue light, it looks marvelous there. It looks great. <laughs> it's a, like a $10 blue light bulb. It, did, it took me about a month to figure it out, but yeah, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not complicated. So look in your crystal ball. What can we expect uh, uh, from the emergence of video AI solutions uh, as it uh, impacts uh, Epifan's market opportunities and, and your product roadmap, say, over the next three to five years? What, what impact is AI going to have on uh, the types of features and capabilities that Epifan is able to serve up. You know, I think it's I think this could be the beginning of another wave of people wanting to capture more video in more spaces. So, for example, uh, in the past two years, we all realized oh, we're having all these smart conversations on Zoom and Teams and other platforms like that. Why aren't we capturing that and getting a nice summary of it? or making it video cut down of it so we don't have to watch a two hour summary of a video. So that's an example of where AI suddenly unlocks all this existing content that's happening today. And that's really good news for us at Epifan because we make such great capture hardware. It means wherever things are happening and people are having good discussions, I think we're gonna hear that conversation. Why aren't we capturing this? Because we have all these great AI tools that can come in and create a 10 minute snippet of this or a 30 second snippet of it. So we know how to get so much more value out of the content that we're creating right now and we can do it with ai and we can do it automatically then suddenly all these spaces are rich for us to be able to capture video and make more great content 
Yeah, there's uh, so much uh, great content, so much knowledge that uh, doesn't even make it to the cutting room floor. It, uh, is, it never even gets captured via video. Uh, it's it's a great source. Or, or of, it can't get curated. Or it's that there's too much content and it's the curation part is so labor intensive that it's not worth you know wading through 700 hours of your conference that you did in Miami, right? Like who has time to go through all that stuff? But if we can use AI to make that, distill that down and give us the good bits, then I want to capture it all. That's yeah, going to be a fun future to watch. And I look forward to watching uh, Epifan's progress over the next couple of years. Uh, George Birchall, VP of Marketing over, over at Epifan. Thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Thanks, Steve. Always great to see you. See you around. And we thank you for taking the time to watch today's episode. If you'd like access to more interviews from the Intelligent Video Series, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. The link's right there, uh, youtube.com, uh, at Intelligent Video Today, to get access to more thought leaders uh, like George Birchall of Epifan. For Intelligent Video Today and Intelligent Research, I'm Steve Vonderhaar. Thanks for your time.